So today, God is going to shake us, but God is going to turn everything up, right side up. I trust that God will just touch every heart, purge every heart, and fill every heart with His grace and His goodness and His mercy and His forgiveness. Okay. Right, so Proverbs chapter 18, verse 21 says the following. Death and life are in the power of the tongue. And they who indulge in it shall eat the fruit of it for death or for life. Okay? Death and life are in the power of the tongue. Okay? So we got the death side, we got the life side. Right. She wants me to read this to me too. Okay. He who finds a true wife finds a good thing. <laughs> and obtains favor from the Lord. I have found a good wife. I have found a good thing. <laughs> I have obtained favor from the Lord. <laughs> okay. All right. Okay, so there's, there's speaking that, brings, that produces death and there's speaking that produces life. Okay, Romans chapter 8. I'll have to sub, subtract 26 seconds now from... <laughs> okay, Romans chapter 8. Right, verse 5. For those who are according to the flesh and are controlled by its unholy desires, set their minds. Okay, minds, this is your mind we're talking about. Your inner world, the thoughts that passes through you. Okay, set their minds on and pursue those things which gratify the flesh. But those who are according to the Spirit and are controlled by the desires of the Spirit, set their minds on and are controlled... And seek those things which gratify the Holy Spirit. Okay, so there's a pursuing. There's a, and, and it happens through meditation. You set your thinking, your mind into a certain direction. Okay? So before you ever said anything, you thought it. Before you ever did anything, you, you thought it. All right? So for you to do something or for you to say something, you, it must have been a thought first. So, I mean, if you, if you say something and it, and it takes you completely by surprise, like where did that come from? I can tell you where it came from. You had a thought first. Okay? <laughs> okay, now verse 6. Now the mind of the flesh, which is sense and reason without the Holy Spirit, Equals death. So that means any thought or any words coming out of the mind of the flesh is death, produces death, and continues to minister death. Okay? So anything that does not proceed out of the Holy Spirit. Okay. So let's just quickly check that into, you know, all, if, if we just look at what people preach, look at what people sing, look at what people say of one another, to one another, uh, look at even what people pray sometimes. You know, does it proceed out of the gospel? Does it proceed out of fellowship with the Holy Spirit? Or does it proceed out of a legalistic thing where we want to hit someone? A legalistic thing where we want to get someone to, I don't know, atone for something. Uh, we need to understand the Holy Spirit was not given by the obedience to the law of Moses. The Holy Spirit was given after the law of Moses was completely fulfilled through the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And when people were in one place, in one accord, when the disciples and, and some others, 120, were together in one place, in one accord, because Jesus said, wait in the city of Jerusalem until you are endured with power from on high. They were all there, one place, one accord, and suddenly there was a, a sound as of a mighty rushing wind, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit. Tongues of fire divided, sat upon each of them, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they started to speak in other tongues. So there came the Spirit. 
That's a completely different source. Now there's different thoughts that causes different speaking, that causes different actions to come out. So what happened? Peter stands up and he starts preaching and, and 3,000 people are added to the number. Okay? All those people, they heard them speaking in tongues and then all the, the Jews in, um, in Jerusalem that came from all the different nations of the world, they were all Jews, but they spoke different languages because they were all from different parts. They all came together and they heard the gospel clearly in their own specific dialect. Now, if, if, if we invite everyone here and give everyone a mic to speak in a different language, to preach to a crowd, no one's going to understand anything. So you see the supernatural thing that happened there. They were talking in tongues. <laughs> but everyone heard the gospel in their own language, in their own, clearly, in their own dialect, as if no other language was spoken. Okay? So just, just that's a supernatural thing that happened there. Okay, right. I thought that that was just awesome. But okay. So, but that's words that comes out of thoughts that comes out of the spirit, which is life. Okay, so death comes through thoughts, comes through speaking, come, it's a certain type of thinking, it's a certain type of mindset, it's a certain source. And you can trace it right back to the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Because there were the two trees in the garden and God spoke to Adam and he said, do not eat of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil because in that day you will die. So Adam and Eve ate of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and death entered, sin entered into the world and death through sin. Okay? So Romans chapter 5 verse 12 says it. So sin entered into the world and death through sin. No one was able to stop it because all men sinned. Okay, so just before we want to take the stick of the law of Moses and start hitting people in the head with it, it says all sinned. So Romans chapter 3 verse 10 says the following. There is no one righteous. Quoting out of Psalm 14. There is no one righteous. No, not even one. So if we want to take the law of Moses, which only looks at what you do, and you take that and you want to hit someone else, you immediately prove yourself a hypocrite. Because if you, if you break one part of the law, you break the whole law, if you read the rest of Romans chapter 3. Okay, so sin, uh, Romans chapter 3, 23, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But... All are justified freely by His grace. Yes. So this means, it doesn't mean now because He died, everyone on earth is just justified. No, no. Justification was made for all and they must receive it yes. and believe it. They must take it in. So there's a source of death, there's a source of life. There's words of death, there's words of life. There's thoughts of death, there's thoughts of life. And you need to choose what tree you're going to partake of. So the one is flesh, the one is spirit. So that which is born of flesh is flesh. That which is born of spirit is spirit. So the moment the gospel came, the spirit came, and people started getting born again, started born, getting born of the spirit. So if you read Galatians chapter 3, he says, Oh, you poor and senseless and thoughtless and silly and unreflecting Galatians, who has bewitched you? Who has cast a spell over you? Unto whom right before your very eyes, Jesus Christ was openly, graphically set forth and portrayed as crucified. So that's the message. Christ on the cross Atoning for the sins of the world. Those are the words being presented to them. The thoughts of God being uh, 
audibly spoken out to them. Okay? Then he says, let me ask you this question. Did you receive the Holy Spirit by obeying the law or was it by hearing the message and believing it? King James says, the hearing of faith. So there's thoughts in God that was hidden throughout ages and generations. Colossians 1, 26, 27. But is now revealed to the saints. Christ in us, the hope of glory. How does Christ, the anointing, the Spirit of God, how does He come in us? How does He dwell on the inside of us? How does the glory come to us? By us hearing a message, by us believing it. What's the message? Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's the message. The moment the message becomes you and what you do, the Holy Spirit is not in it. Because the Spirit did not come through your obedience to the law. Your, the, the Spirit of God, the Holy Spirit came through the ministry of the gospel, through the speaking of the words of life. So there are thoughts of death, which is the mind of the flesh. There are thoughts of life, which is the mind of the spirit. Okay. Now, if we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I mean, this is all scriptures that we know. 1 Corinthians chapter 2. What does he say in verse 2? I want to know nothing among you. I want to make a display of the knowledge of nothing. I want to, I, I want to know nothing. Except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Okay? So he says, don't tell me anything. I don't want to hear anything. I want to hear Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's the message that we need to be preaching. That's the word that we need to meditate upon. That's the word that we need to be speaking. And all of our thoughts and all of our actions need to spring from that. So if we have judgment in our hearts and we start Skinnering people, you know. We start bearing tales, speaking judgment, sowing seeds of judgment of people because of stories that we start to speak. That's not in line with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Because uh, the gospel of Jesus Christ is not about spreading judgment. It's about putting all the judgment of sin upon him. And from there, the mercy goes out. From there, forgiveness goes out. From there, grace is ministered to people, empowering them to do the same works that Jesus did and even greater than that. So the gospel of Jesus Christ has the power to bring us into the exact image and likeness of Jesus Christ himself. So when we look at what he did for the world, the punishment that came upon him for sin, we cannot, with the, with, in the same sentence, want to dish out punishment. We need to lay down the one and take the other. Okay? So the one will produce death and the one will produce life. So death and life is in the power of the tongue. So what are we, what are we meditating on? What are we saying? What are we ministering to people? Okay. Right, so... 1 Corinthians chapter 2, if we continue there, he says, from verse, where are we? Verse 9. On the contrary, as the scripture says, what eye has not seen and ear has not heard and has not entered into the heart of man. Okay, so those are thoughts that the flesh does not naturally have. This is unknown to the flesh. This is unknown to the Adamic man. Okay? He says, as the scripture says, with eyes not seen, ears not heard, and has not entered into the heart of man, all that God has prepared and keeps ready for those who love him, who hold him in affectionate reverence, promptly obeying him, and gratefully recognizing the benefits he has bestowed. Okay, so how do we know that we love him? Well, it says here, who promptly obeys him. So, John chapter 14, verse 21 says, If anyone has my words and keeps it, it's the one who really loves me. 
and I will love him, and I will show myself, I will make myself real to him. So if you want God to be real to you, you need to keep the words of Jesus. So we need to distinguish. In the new, it's not like there's now suddenly no obedience. We are, if you read Romans chapter 7, verse 6, 6, it says, Now we are not obedient to the old code of written regulation, the law of Moses. But in the new, we are obedient to the promptings of the Spirit in the newness of life. The one brings death, the one brings life. The one has its source in the knowledge of good and evil, and the one has its source in the tree of life. Okay? So we are obedient. We are obedient to God. We are accountable, but we are accountable to God. So... What do we need to give account for? What did you believe? What did you believe? Not what what all the stuff that you've ever done in your life. Listen to me. You need to give account for what you've done in the body. What is that? Did you believe while you were in the body? The scriptures need to line up. You're not being judged If you believe in the blood of Christ, the atoning sacrifice for the sin of the world, you're not being judged on the actions. You are judged on the actions of Jesus. If you let the blood of Christ come and wash you clean, if you let the word of the gospel enter your heart, and you become born again. If you let the Spirit of God come into you, you are born again, right? Right. So, for those who believe, John chapter 3, it says, verse 18, those who believe will never be judged, never be condemned. And he says exactly the same thing in John chapter 5. If you believe in Jesus Christ, you are not condemned for your actions of disobedience. If you believe or obey the gospel of Christ. Okay. If you align your heart with his words, his thoughts, you put your trust in what he did. Okay. I think one of the biggest problems is People think, we kind of think we're okay. So now we want to compare ourselves. One person comparing himself with another person. Now on that standard, I may look a little bit better than my neighbor. And now I want to judge my neighbor. Thinking I'm okay. But if we take the measure with the measure that you judge others, it will be measured back to you. Okay? So, but when we look to the true standard of the law, let me just help you if you want to feel condemned. If you want to judge someone else. If you want to even judge yourself. Jesus said, I believe the Sermon on the Mount, you know, Matthew chapter 5, 6, 7, Jesus I really believe Jesus put the the true standard of the law in its place. He was speaking to people under the covenant, under the law of Moses, before the cross. And he said, Matthew 5 verse 28, he says, if you even think, if you even have a lustful thought about a woman, You have committed adultery in your heart with her. Okay. But now, okay, it says you have have heard it said that you shall not commit adultery. But I say, even if you just have a thought, okay, there's that one thing. Now we go to Galatians chapter 5. And it says, the doings of the flesh are clear. They are indecency, immorality. They are uh, anger. 
Okay, so anger is okay. We can quickly justify anger, but we want to judge the guy with immorality. If we really, if we really see the state of humanity without the Spirit of God, if we think for a second, I'm okay as I am, we got a problem. Because it's in the same sentence that he, that he mentions anger as that he mentions immorality. But that doesn't justify either of those actions. Christ and his nature is what needs to be formed in us. Okay? And it has a different source. It's got different thoughts. It's got different expressions. It's got different words. It's a different spirit altogether. So if you wanna if you wanna judge someone else thinking you're better than that person, you are much worse than you think. <laughs> if you wanna judge yourself, it's like the pot calling the kettle black, you know. So listen, all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, but all are justified. Freely by his grace. Okay, so the question is not so much what is this person's uh, list of sins that they've committed. The question is has repentance taken place? Okay, has repentance taken place? Now, under the word repentance, there's a lot of things said. But the word repentance means simply this, to change your thoughts. Does it make sense? The word in Greek, repentance, it means this. It means to turn. That's what it means. But if you take the, the words and the root words out of which it is made, made up, meta is a change of place, noyo is thoughts. So it's the changing of place of your thoughts. So you take you, your thoughts, your thinking is taken out of one paradigm and placed into another paradigm. Out of one belief system and placed into another belief system. Your thinking has changed. So death and life is in the power of the tongue, but the mind of the flesh is death and the mind of the spirit is life. So if we're going to keep on thinking about the things of the flesh, we are going to keep on ministering death to ourselves. So it's one thing to receive forgiveness. Yay, I'm forgiven. So that means now I'm off the hook. Great. But now, in secret in your heart, if you continue to think there, you will start, you will, you will continue to speak there and you will return in doing there. But if you start thinking according to the sacrifice of Jesus, if you start speaking according to the sacrifice of Jesus, your actions will get in line with the sacrifice of Jesus. So, we were in 1 Corinthians chapter 2. I keep on interrupting myself. Okay. So he says, I have not seen, ear have not heard, and has not come up in the heart of man. Those are the things that, so it's not stuff that you can make up. It's stuff that the Holy Spirit brings into your heart. Okay, he reveals it to you. Verse 10, yes, to us God has unveiled, yet to us God has unveiled and revealed them by and through his Spirit. The Holy Spirit searches and diligently exploring, examining everything, even sounding the profound and bottomless things, the divine counsels, the hidden uh, things hidden and beyond man's scrutiny. For what person perceives and knows and understands what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him? Okay, just think there also of, uh, what's it, Proverbs 23. It says, as he thinks in his heart, so is he. So the way you think, that's how you will be. So if you think, okay, no one sees my thoughts, I will indulge in this kind of thinking. That's what you will be and that's what you will say, that's what will come out of you and that's eventually what you will, what you will act like and become. 
Okay? So repentance is so important. It's so vital. It's so necessary. But here's the thing. It's the Spirit of God that works it inside of us. What person perceives what passes through a man's thoughts except the man's own spirit within him? Just so no one discerns, comes to know, comprehend the thoughts of God except the Spirit of God. So what we need is the thoughts of God, the mind of Christ. But guess what? You cannot have the mind of Christ unless He gives it to you. Do you hear? You cannot have the thoughts in His heart. Only He knows the thoughts that goes through His heart. What I have not seen, ear have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man. He has it, but He's prepared it for you who love Him. Now He wants to share His thoughts with you. He wants His mind to be active inside you. He wants his words to be on your lips. He wants his actions to come through you. He wants you to, to think like, talk like, do exactly like Jesus Christ. If you believe in me, you will do the works that I do and even greater works than these because I go to my Father. John 14, 12. Okay, so that's what he wants for us. Now he says, Now we have not received the spirit that belongs to the world. So that's the mind of the flesh that is death. But the Holy Spirit who is from God, given to us that we might realize and comprehend and appreciate the gifts of divine favor and blessing so freely and lavishly bestowed on us by God. So there's gifts, there's all kinds of awesome stuff in the Spirit of God that we need to live in, that we need to have in our lives, and we can only have it if we think like Him. Okay? Then he says, we are setting these truths forth not, not in words taught by human wisdom, which is death, but taught by the Holy Spirit, combining and interpreting spiritual truths with spiritual language to those who possess the Holy Spirit. That is life. But the natural, non-spiritual man does not accept or welcome or admit into his heart the gifts of and teachings and revelations of the Spirit of God, for they are meaningless nonsense to him, and he is incapable of knowing them, progressively recognizing, understanding, becoming better acquainted with them, because they are spiritually discerned and estimated and appreciated. So you need the Holy Spirit to have the mind of Christ. Okay? But he says, the natural guy does not take it into his heart. The natural guy does not hear the word of the gospel of Jesus Christ crucified, the words of life, and let it enter his, his heart so that he can receive the Holy Spirit. So now he says, but the spiritual man tries all things, examines, investigates, inquires into, questions, discerns all things, yet is himself to be put on trial and judged by no one. So no one, if you have the Holy Spirit, if you've got the mind of Christ, if you are thinking the way the Spirit is thinking, if you're meditating on His Word all day long, and your actions are being transformed because of the renewal of the mind, you know, Romans 12, 12 chapter 2, you are transformed by the renewal of your mind. With other words, the mind of the Spirit, the mind of Christ is taking hold of you, it's, it's, it's bearing fruit in you, it's producing different thoughts, different actions. Okay, it says, you cannot be judged especially by people who subscribe to the law of Moses. So don't listen to the words of judgment of people. Okay? But if your own heart is judging you, maybe it's time to just turn to God and just receive something that can help you to see Him and to be transformed into His image. Maybe it's just time to look at the sacrifice of Jesus Christ, you know, and, and be transformed by that sacrifice. All right. So the natural man does not admit it into his heart. The spiritual man tries all things but is judged by no one. And then he says, For who has known and understood the mind of the Lord as to give him, instruct, instruct him, give him knowledge? But we have the mind of Christ and do hold the thoughts and purposes of his heart. So that's what you look like after repentance. So, when we ask the question, uh, has repentance taken place? People have all kinds of ideas. You know, someone must be sorrowful for so long, or, the, you know, no, that's not the, the question. Has the thinking transformed inside? Has the thinking transformed from the mind of the flesh to the mind of Christ? 
So we are, there's a momentary repentance where we receive the gospel, but there's a daily repentance where we keep on receiving the gospel. Every, every day, your conscience are, needs to be purged even clearer. Every day, the blood of Christ washes you. You know, the washing of the water by the word. Every day, your, your conscience goes from clear to even clearer. To, so that you can see more of the mind of Christ. So that you can hear more of what he's saying. Okay? So, the, the message is not... God is judging you. The message is, by the blood of Jesus, your sins are forgiven. But now, as your sin is forgiven, meditate on him. Get your thoughts in line with him. Okay, so just, just man, i got to start finishing, but just listen. Hebrews chapter 3. He says, So then, brethren, consecrate it and set apart for God. That's all of you. Okay, consecrated, set apart for God, who share in his heavenly calling, thoughtfully and attentively consider Jesus, <laughs> the apostle and high priest whom we confessed as ours when we embraced the Christian faith. See how faithful he was to him who appointed him apostle and high priest as Moses was also faithful in the whole house of God. Consider Jesus. Yeah. So in your thinking, meditate on him, yeah. look to him. Behold him. Okay? Consider Jesus. All right. Let's just get to the actual message. Acts chapter 5. The God of our forefathers, verse 30, raised up Jesus whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. So this is now Peter preaching to the Jews uh, after they were persecuted for healing that man at the gate called Beautiful in Acts chapter 3. This is now still part of that. He says, verse 31, now listen. God exalted him to his right hand to be prince and leader and savior and deliverer and preserver in order to grant repentance to Israel and to bestow forgiveness and release from sins. And we are witnesses of these things, and the Holy Spirit is also whom God has bestowed on those who obey Him. Now, when they heard that, they were cut to the heart and infuriated and wanted to kill the disciples. So, speaking to natural people with a natural mindset, subscribing to the law of Moses, telling them, God is granting you repentance. So, now the question is, do you take the repentance that God is giving? Or do you insist on justifying your culture, justifying your mindset, justifying your traditions, justifying the stuff that you've been busy with? So there's repentance granted. With other words, without the working of the Holy Spirit, it is not possible. Okay? So the forgiveness comes. It's preached. Acts chapter 13, 38 uh, I think someone mentioned Acts 13 on this side, okay? Acts chapter 13, 38 says, you know, through this man, forgiveness and removal of sins is now proclaimed to you. So the forgiveness is proclaimed. But it says, comes with a warning, it says, so don't let it be said of you what is spoken in the prophets. Uh, look, you scoffers and scorners, marvel, perish, vanish away, for I will do a deed in your day which you will not be believe, even if it told you. So don't, don't let it be said of you that you don't believe it. Okay? So it's a proclamation. The forgiveness is there, man. It's given. It's paid for. It's Jesus Christ and Him crucified. The sins are atoned for. Now the question is, will you get your, the mind of Christ on this thing? Will you get your mind in line with the Spirit of God? And will you allow the Spirit of God in, to come into your heart and to start challenging your thoughts and to start challenging your words and to start challenging the way you speak? I mean, from God's side, your sins are completely forgiven. But what does it help? Jesus paid the price, but we insist on meditating death. We insist on thinking and speaking death. After he has taken the death upon himself to, you know, to bring life to us. 
Okay? So this is the question. He says, uh, 31, the King James says, God exalted with his right hand to be a prince. Him God exalted with his right hand to be a prince and a savior for to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. Okay, so in Acts chapter 24, for instance, Jesus said that repentance and forgiveness of sins should be preached, you know, through all the world. So this is something that we need to preach. Your sins are forgiven. By the blood of Christ, there is forgiveness of, of sins. Now start thinking different. Now start meditating different. Now take the word. Let it challenge the way you think. Let it, let it change the spirit that is, that is active on the inside of you. God wants to correct the inside. God wants to correct the thought life. God wants to correct the word that is active. God wants to correct the identity that is in operation on the inside of you. So either it's going to be Adam that is active or it's going to be Christ that is active. So we know that Adam was crucified and killed and he was buried through the cross of Jesus Christ, but he didn't stand up. Christ stood up. The old Adamic nature was crucified. I have been crucified with Christ. It is no longer I that live. The moment I received the Holy Spirit, I was made a new creation. The moment I received the Holy Spirit, I got the mind of Christ. The moment I received the Holy Spirit, I received his life. Okay? So, um, you are not what you did. You are not what you've done in your life. You are not who Adam is. But imagine we can access the mind of Christ to see who we really are. Imagine we can see us from his perspective and think about us from his perspective. You can. Because he's given you his Holy Spirit. He's given you his mind. So now, my prayer is that the, the, the Spirit of God will reveal his mind and that we will embrace the mind of Christ and just let go of anything else. Let go of any other meditation. Repentance is a gift that is given. Forgiveness is a gift that is given. Righteousness is a gift that is given. Embrace it. Receive it. Okay? So what does it mean when I say repentance is granted or repentance is given? It's not God thinking, mm, will I grant you repentance this time? Or will I think, mm, no, 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 through the cross. He has made a way for you to think like he thinks. It is granted. It is given. You've been given access to his mind. Now you can. Okay? So we can think the way he thinks about ourselves, about others. If we can think the way he thinks, we can speak the way he speaks. If we can speak the way he speaks, it will be life in us and around us all the time. Okay? So God over your heart with all diligence, for from it flows the springs of life, comes the issues of life, okay? Let the meditation of, of the thoughts of my, my mind and the meditation of my heart be acceptable unto you, O Lord. So, Lord Jesus, we thank you that you've granted us repentance. We thank you that you've given us the mind of Christ. We thank you that our sins are forgiven now, I just pray for a correction to start happening in every heart. I pray for a correction to start happening in every heart. 